interview with the MEC for social development in Pumalanga, uh, Mrs. Lindy Wenchali. Uh, we are just going to touch base on a few issues. Uh, MEC, welcome to Iraq Taxi Rank. Then we see here we have you have organized yourselves a very good campaign that marks the end. What can you summarize the entire uh, campaign? How, how has it been? No, thank you very much. And uh, today we are here as both national and provincial government. We are closing the 16 days of activism of no violence against women and children. We, we are encouraging even all sectors. That is why we are here in Iraq as a uh, taxi ring to say there are a lot of women who are using taxis who are commuting and there was a lot of uh, things that have been said to say women are being victimized at the taxi ranks but here we have taxi association and taxi bosses who have joined hands with government in fighting for the safety of these women and children and everybody who's commuting from the rank. And I must say that as we include all stakeholders, social development, police, the associations, NGOs, your CBOs, we had quite a number of awareness that we have uh, 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 established. But what we have also done is to say enough about campaigns. Now we are more on accountability. What have we done? So that is why you'd see us in court supporting those that are being uh, arrested and we're calling on Justice Department also because it's part of the stakeholders nationally to say we want to see prosecution because you can arrest, but if there's no prosecution, but also urging our members to say, if you open a case, you must be there, you must give testimony so that there is a prosecution. But we have seen these numbers of GPVF increasing during the COVID-19 pandemic, but we are happy that the police are hands-on. They are dealing with those. And we are discouraging women to say, if you go to a police station, they said, go back home, talk about it as a family. Because next time they might be not going back. They might kill you. Hence we're saying, allow the law and all our law enforcement agencies to assist you. And the social development, we've got social workers, we've got their safety havens where you can put you temporarily, why we settle and deal with your challenges. And we're saying, everybody has a right to be safe, everybody has a right to be treated with dignity. That is why we're saying everybody's rights, it's human rights. Whether you are a woman, whether you are a child, you are a, a protected by the constitution of the Republic. Uh, MSV, in your remarks or in your keynote, you mentioned the very important issue of uh, sex workers. Most of these GPVs are happening in that sector of the business. As the department, are you making inroads to address those kind of issues that they might be having as sex workers? We have a, a department, a section that deals with that, uh, where you give workshops, where you give uh, working together with uh, your SAPS and working with the Department of Health in making sure that they are safe. Because you will not uh, do away with it, it's there. What you must do, you must provide a, a counseling, you must provide uh, also saying police must not uh, turn them away. And we have workshop on how people must behave. And when you are not, you are threatened, you don't feel safe. What is it that you must do? And uh, it is unfortunate that some of them, they are being attacked while doing the, those activities. And we are saying it cannot be correct. Can't be correct. And then let's scale down the entire campaign to our district in Kangala, looking into all six municipalities. Uh, what are the numbers in terms of uh, victim support or in terms of arrest and all those things? Uh, I think those statistics were given by the uh, 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 National Commissioner and Minister of Police. But as you come down to the province, we had about 30,000 of cases of EGPVF. But uh, taking that uh, to Ngangala, Ngangala we account for about 11,000. And most of that are in Emalashim. Hence, we're saying where there are mining activities and a lot of people in flags of people, it's where we've seen those uh, statistics increasing because our hotspot in the province, it's Emalakene, it's in Stifchete, it's in Gaben in Begi, um, I think in uh, Siabuswa. So it tells you the trend 
where these uh, activities in uh, Pinar, Gahoy, where there is violence. And we're saying as a province, we're focusing on those hotspots to deal with such. Lastly, tapping to your political knowledge as a seasoned uh, activist and a political office bearer, you spoke about climate justice. Uh, looking into the area of Nkangala, particularly two towns like ours, Middleburg here and uh, Whitbank, it's a mining uh, business town. So there's a threat that we might move to renewable energy uh, that might potentially render these towns into ghost towns. I mean, wha wha what is your view and maybe what do you think could be done to rescue the situation? I think Kemala Sheni and Steve Chete, um, and your Sekunda, Tabachu, maybe MLO a bit, are more of mining towns. And as uh, Malasheni, we account for about seven coal fired power stations and accounting for many mines, over 100. And those are what generates economy because we are an economic hub of uh, the province, but we are a, an energy generation hub to the southern. Remember, we're not supplying only um, Umalanga or South Africa. We go beyond our shores in supplying that. When we want to move to these cleaner energies, I think uh, we have a lot to do and work so that we keep the losing of jobs, the shutting down, and we've just built some newly uh, uh, power stations. And we're saying, Maybe technology might assist us instead of using your coal fire. But we are a country that has these resources. I don't think it will be an easy thing to migrate from the coal and moving towards that. And it leaves a lot of engagement because there will be job losses. Like you are saying, it will be ghost town. We've seen mining houses are being opened, closed. And we're saying it needs all of us to be on board communities because we don't think when we host about seven power stations and over a hundred power stations, we should just close our doors. But I think that engagement between the, 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 the government at all level with our communities and our business people is key for us.